Hello and welcome to something I am calling the very first ever, and maybe last, I don't know, Lazy Girl Vlogmas or Vlogmas Lazy Girl Edition. Um, To tell you the truth, I had no idea what Vlogmas was. I was never a person who really followed trends on YouTube, maybe topics. But I do remember back in the day whenever people would do things like boyfriend tag or best friend tag or they'd like write their name in a certain kind of way. I don't know. And maybe I might watch it, but I mostly turned into YouTube for videos that went viral. And I'm talking like old school viral, like Chocolate Rain or Charlie Bit My Finger. And then when the beauty gurus started coming out and telling us what to do with our eyebrows and our lips and our foundation and our hair, I was watching men, but as far as really contributing and like the YouTube culture, and I consider that to be things like Vlogmas, I didn't watch the content and never thought of myself as doing it. So this year I had been looking for something new to do on my channel in the month of December. Um, all year long, I've been kind of trying out different things. And while I definitely had some ideas for some longer form, you know, commentary type content, I also wanted to have a little bit of fun. I love the holiday season. Um, it is not a secret to anybody who knows me, but this year my holidays are a little bit, mm, <laughs> there's not a lot going on. And you know, really for the last couple years, there hasn't been a whole lot going on, but it hasn't changed the fact that I love it. Um, the tree behind me is one of three trees I have in my little apartment. Well, I don't have a little, but in my apartment. And um, I still decorate even though I'm the only guest that's gonna see any of it. And um, I still do things like dress my dog up in a festive sweater. Uh, and I still wear Christmas sweater sweaters around the house on a day. It's actually kind of a problem. Um, but I wanted to do something creative and holiday themed with my content. And I thought, why not Vlogmas? Here's why not Vlogmas. Here's how I answered that question. The first thing is you gotta have something going on every day. That's very difficult um, here at the end of the year. I'm not a person who has like a million family parties, work parties, um, travel commitments that I just, it's just not like that for me this December. That's just not what's happening. Also, uh, when I see people that like the big dogs of Vlogmas, when I see their, the hauls that they do and them decorating their huge homes with like these big trees, I'm just like, I don't even know if I could create the content people would want to watch. And then just in general, the rigidity or the uh, the way that it could kind of tear down on you to have to make a video every single day and post it, it's a lot. Still, there have been people who have been doing a great, great job with their content. Um, I've really been tuning in to creators like Chelsea Cam Callahan, uh, Max and Maya Living, Chelsea Janae, lots of Chelsea's. Um, there's lots of creators who have been doing it and have been doing a really good job, but I just found it to be very, very overwhelming. However, I still wanted to participate. I still wanted to do something different on my channel here in this last, here in this week leading up to Christmas. Um, and I'll go back to normal in the last week going into the new year. I have some things planned for the end of 2023. But um, yeah, I wanted to participate. So I came up with the idea of Lazy Girl Vlogmas. So what is it? What does it mean? Well, first of all, it means I'm allowed to start late, like really late, like Christmas is in a week and I've just started and that's fine. That's fine with Lazy Girl Vlogmas. Um, the second thing is I don't wanna post every day. I'm gonna be posting every other day. Uh, because that's what fits best for me. And also it gives me time to do enough activities to where people even wanna watch the vlogs. Those are the only things, those two things. I decided that I was going to make this first vlog just something kind of short, sweet, and to the point. So today I'm going to be taking you guys through a little bit of my morning routine. I'm going to be going out and doing some little knickknack shopping, not like real Christmas shopping, but just like getting some knickknacks, getting some food for my dog, and also, um, I'm going to be editing some videos. I was going to take you into that process with me. But yeah, this first day, just very short and sweet to the point. And it is going to be the beginning of this tiny little festive creative journey for me. So now let me take you into a morning routine. All right. I have never done this before, meaning wash my face and go through my whole process on camera. I am an old school double cleanser type of person. So I use Dr. Palmer's and Panoxyl, the benzoyl peroxide wash. And then I do jojoba oil as my moisturizer. I've been doing this for the last like five years. It's not perfect, but it saved my skin from severe acne. Uh, that's my preferred toothpaste, my preferred mouthwash. I am moving so fast here. <laughs> 
anyway um this next portion uh i am going to be making here a vanilla chai latte and i was so excited when i found out i could buy the chai concentrate at the store like i just had never even thought about it before i lost the top to my arachino the thing that steams your milk yeah so i watch it as it happens and it's pretty good so there you go that is normally what my mornings really quickly might look like of course you're doing this for youtube so you or for the internet i love when um people make fun of influencers for set like the fact that we all know that you set your tripod up to go lay down in the bed and then film yourself getting out because it's like of course they did they're trying to they're what did somebody say they are turning the mundane into the cinematic so yeah they're gonna set up a tripod they're gonna film it's just such a funny little conversation to me anyway um that is a couple steps of my morning now i am gonna go and get dressed so i can go out into the day i would invite you to get dressed with me but i'm not going to so i will just come back on camera when i have my outfit on which is not going to be anything it i'll be back Okay, I absolutely forgot to come back on camera, but you'll see my my outfit is nothing special. Um, the first place I headed to was PetSmart, where I immediately got distracted by all of the goodies that they have for dogs. So I filled my cart up with a couple of things for Sebastian. I'm gonna be making him these Christmas cookies. I'm probably gonna do that in tomorrow's vlog and we'll see if he likes that. This is for his advent calendar, which I didn't show you guys today, but I'll show you tomorrow. I needed to get him another Christmas sweater because he ate his sweaters from last year. They were just too small. Luckily, these people had an extra large and the one that I liked. So I went ahead and grabbed him one of those. Didn't take too long for my cart to look like this though. Um, you know, he's my baby, so whatever. Um, after that, I went over to World Market and I was looking, well, not for this, not for the Valentine's Day display, please. I was looking for a, oh, this was cute. It was like a little, cute little, cute. I was looking for an advent calendar, but I found the hot cocoa station, which is something that I also wanted. So I um, grabbed that. I ended up putting that right back though. It was too much work. Um, I love my chocolate spoons, a little chocolate man. Um, that's always nice. And these were the advent calendars that they had, and I didn't like any of them. So, yeah. After I left there, I went over to Total Wines, and I was looking for, like, chocolate liqueur. And I found this brand. I have never seen them before, but I grabbed their classic. And so hopefully it's good with my cocoa. And I was back home with all my little baggies and I had to set my child free. I crate him because if he's a loose, he will eat things. And uh, then it was time to take him outside. He likes to make this part difficult despite wanting to go. No splander about my pencil tree, okay? I didn't know it was gonna be that skinny when I got it two years ago, or the lack of gifts under my tree, all right? I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Okay, so I'm back, and I thought I would do a haul of the stuff that I got while I was out. You kind of already saw the things that I got for the dog, which is most of it, but I also got some other things. The us with World Market. Which I went into World Market, like I said in the voiceover, because I wanted an advent calendar. But I think um, December 18th, it's too late. So I got the little hot chocolate man um, that uh, was on the screen that I showed you guys. I got some of these spoons. I love these spoons. I usually end up keeping these spoons for like months after my, you know, whatever is over. Months after cookies is over. And I got this hot cocoa mix. So I normally just go to Target and get a bag of, why am I sitting like this? I feel like I'm sitting, I'm sitting weird. No more. So I normally just go to Target and get a bag of like this stuff, right? But I like the, um, I like peppermint and they don't have, they, they were all out of peppermint. So, and then I accidentally, I saw they had a whole bunch of this stuff and I was like, oh great. 
This is dark chocolate peppermint coffee. It's disgusting. So I was in World Market and I saw this hot cocoa mix. They've got caramel, they've got peppermint, and they've got milk chocolate. And it's in this little can. So let's open it and see what the can looks like. The can, uh, is it resealable? This is one thing about a world market. It's just so cute. It's like, okay, wait a second, wait a second. I can figure this out. I can figure this out. Hold on. So this is the peppermint one. This is the one that I would like. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. So there you go. So there it is. And then you could just close it back like that. It's actually probably super sustainable and better for the environment than getting the little bags. So I've got caramel, which I probably won't like. I don't like caramel. And I've got regular milk chocolate, which milk, milk chocolate hot chocolate is so much better than uh, regular hot chocolate. It's not even funny. During the Christmas season, I really like hot chocolate. Like I said, in the voiceover, so that's important. Got something else from Total Wine after I moved on from World Market. Because if you what what holiday hot chocolate D belt the liqueur and you guys saw me pick this up i've never had this before this is called borgata so that'll be interesting when i make my hot chocolate and then i also got i got myself a little cup i've been seeing a lot of holiday cocktails online and i'm very simple and making anything with champagne and i love it but um i need to get some cranberry some uh i think it's i don't know i don't know but i need to get some different things and I'm gonna drink my Christmas cocktails out of here. And then I got this champagne. Has anybody ever seen this before? This was at the checkout at Total Wine, so I got this. Also went into Sephora. Not a big day for me in Sephora. I ordered a couple of things online. Um, I'm obsessed right now with lip balms, but I didn't get any lip balms. I actually returned one. I returned the Laneige lip balm because I can smell it. And I didn't, I don't want to smell it. Um, and all I got, this is, this, this, this little package right here. Um, and listen, I have no problem, okay, getting something for myself, which is what this is. Um, I have been seeing people talk about perfume all over the place on social media this year. I'm not a perfume person. Um, I normally just go to Lush and I love the Rose Jam like scent. And I usually get that for myself every holiday season. So I'll probably make a trip over there, get myself something from Lush. But I have been seeing these, this rep replica and the candles. The candles are so expensive and for what? But apparently it's the type of candle that you should be buying because it like burns clean. I'm a Bath & Body Works candle person and apparently they're bad for you or whatever, but I still, they smell good. So I buy them, um, but I try and use a candle warmer so it's not, you know, the, uh, the smoke, you don't get that unclean burn. But anyway, um, replica has been very popular on social media. Or I've been seeing people talk about it, so I'm, I'm interested. So Sephora has this little set and it is $40, but I had some store credit. And so it was $12 for me. I love store credit. And yeah, you get these little minis, all of these minis. Some may say $40, but yeah. So I went in and actually smelled all of these separately um, on the, uh, like in the perfume area. And um, I will try them out and use them and probably go back in one day when I'm feeling maybe around my birthday and get a free and get a, a, a big size. They're having a fragrance event right now where it's 20% off fragrances, but without being like married to one of their fragrances, I still didn't want to spend, you know, the money on a, that fragrance. Now, it's stuff that I got for the puppy. Then it's all in here. You guys saw that earlier. I am gonna get started on editing. I said that in the intro, I said I would do some like behind the scenes, like of how I edit and my whole process and everything. So I'm gonna get started on that now. Um, I am going to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get started. All right, this is my little editing setup for now. Um, it's not very fancy at all. To be honest, I just have not, I, I mean, but it's it's the basics. It is the basics. I love all this dog chair, dog hair on my shirt. This is a chair my mom got me during quarantine um, when I was staying with my parents during the lockdown. 
she didn't realize it was a gamer chair. I just said, I want something that I can sit in comfortably while I teach online. And she got me this chair. And coincidentally, we have a younger family member who's a young man who games a lot. And he saw my chair. He got so excited. So he ended up getting one for Christmas. Anyway. A little bit of blight. Oh, that doesn't look good at all. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's get started with the editing process. As you can see, I got a little distracted because the Z-Way and George Santos interview um, hit YouTube today and I was super excited to watch it. And I honestly can't believe that he even agreed to this because he had to know what he was in for. Let me just say this. Um, I love this so much, but I know why this bothered people. And also let me address this in the back. I used to keep this little setup right here when, uh, for my YouTube. I used to keep this in my bedroom. You'll see it back there. But it was so crowded, I moved it to uh, I moved it to in here. So I know like my last Instagram post is like, oh, it's next to my bed, but it's not. Um, I moved it into this room because it just made more sense. Anyway, um, I know why this bothers people, but this is such a genius move on Z-Way's part to like do this interview. And look at his face. Look at George Santos's face. Like, I can't. I love this so much. Um, I'm going to have to come back and watch it later though, because I said I would get this posted by five o'clock and I am running out of time. I love a good time lapse moment, but this is actually kind of hilarious because I was only working for an additional two minutes before I decided to take another break. Okay, so I've just decided I want to try and make this really cute, so I might not post it by 5, it might be like 5.36. But that means that I have to stop filming it and actually just get down to the editing. Um, so I'm going to do that. I want to say that I have a lot more stuff planned. I just wanted to make sure and get one of these out today. And right now I have about an hour before my posting deadline. I'm not going to make it. I need at least another hour, but I need to go and like finish up what I'm doing. I asked my patrons, I said, what, um, you know, what do you guys think I should do? Like, what are your ideas? And they gave me so many ideas, but one of them had a really interesting question for me. I want to answer it um, in the last couple minutes of this vlog, considering that it ties into why I'm even doing this in the first place. They said, what would you do differently if you could do your YouTube journey all over again from the beginning? And I think it's a wonderful question because I don't think anybody who's been here for a while is like, boy, <laughs> it's been smooth sailing for her. Like not at all. Um, and if you uh, have been paying attention to what I've been saying in this space or the content I've been putting out, you know, I'm still sort of um, reacclimating and re, you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, this definitely has been a year of like reflection and trying to build back better, if you will. Was that someone's presidential slogan at one point? Like on TV or a real president? Anyway. Um, so what I would do differently is nothing because I couldn't do anything differently. When I first started YouTube, I was absolutely just being myself. And unfortunately, <laughs> myself at the time was someone who had a lot of lessons to learn when it came to interacting with this platform a couple of weeks ago or inter any internet platform. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I talked about what I wish every content creator knew outside of here's how you make six figures and here's how you can become a full-time creator. Like the emotional knowledge that people need to have, the like being aware of the worst case scenario for certain types of opinions or the process of, you know, the, the, the fact that you're going to receive a lot of criticism and it's going to be hard to take and to process and people giving it to you won't understand why you can't uh, just receive it peacefully because they don't know what it's like to be getting that from all sides. Plus you're criticizing yourself. Like the mental state of content creators, I'm very interested in what um, mental health and, and psychologists and counselors and sociologists and anthropologists, like people that study society, culture, mental health, 
what will they have to say about this era of creators and how or, or media content and how the very, very nuanced and specific and niche way that we are interacting with the world and the world is interacting with us, what will they have to say about how it has affected our minds and our perception of self? And um, will they be honest about it? I think a big part of being a content creator is a lot of times people say, oh, well, whatever you're uh, talking about is not valid because, you know, your job isn't real. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's something that I would love to see someone talk about. And someone said, well, or I had a lot of people actually who were like, well, maybe you should write that book just as even like an ebook, like things to look out for. And it's something I absolutely want to do because I think it's important. And so if I was to write that book, here are definitely some things that I would put in, which consequently are things that I, I would do differently. So I guess there are things I would do differently. The, the only reason why I say there's not is because there was no way that I would have known, right? I didn't know. So the first thing I've been saying it since the beginning of the year, um, uh, please be aware that all types of authenticity are not celebrated. And by that, I mean, there is a big push whenever it comes to sharing yourself online, just be yourself. You know, people will say, your fear of looking stupid is holding you back, blah, blah, blah. The internet is a brutal place for anybody who's a little bit different. And sometimes the internet is like a uh, big fat red flag meter and you know there it's it's like there's two sides right you have some people who are just maybe a little bit different and they get laughed off or bullied off the internet and then you have some people who there's a real problem here like something is going like this is not right you know situations where there's abuse or um you know uh misogyny or misogynoir or you know that where somebody is clearly breaking some sort of societal moral code and they're putting themselves online and Sometimes the internet serves as a very, very important part of like the social justice realm of uh, making sure that we as human beings perform in a way that is best for the greatest good of people. But sometimes, sometimes people just are terrible and you need to be aware of whenever you put yourself out there that they may treat you, you know, for having a bad hair day or for having bad luck in your dating life, whatever, they may treat you just as bad as they would treat someone who was committing actual crimes and putting them online. Um, you know, or sometimes the crime, people who commit the crimes will will be treated better. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird place. And authenticity is such a biased and subjective uh, thing. And everybody's not going to be received the same. And so just make sure you have a real support group offline, people that really know you, so you have to know you. That is a lesson that I have learned. You have to know you and be proud of you. So if you're going to put yourself out there, you're going to tell these stories, please, or you're going to you're going to put yourself out. You're going to be authentic. Be prepared to be called out on that everywhere you turn around. And the, in a perfect world, you would have people in your real life who knew you well and who were able to say, hey, that's our girl. We know her. We already knew these stories. The amount of people that were surprised. <laughs> when I started talking about how I really felt about my really, you know, and it is what it is, right? Like those are my feelings, whether they were bad or good, those were my feelings. Um, ideally, before you start speaking to thousands and thousands of strangers, um, there would be at least one or two people in your real life who who knew what you were talking about, right? Now, sometimes people look at the internet as kind of like a, a free space. Like I can't talk to anybody in my real life, so I'm gonna say it here. And I, I'm just, I speak from experience when I say, I think it's better to have the support offline and then come online and start talking rather than have no support offline, nobody who knows the real truth. And then you say it on the internet to hundreds of thousands of people. And now you got people online up your butt and people offline up your butt. And so definitely authenticity um, is something that needs to be, um, needs to be, needs to be measured very precisely and people need to understand that everything about them can't be shared. Now, I say that, but then there are people that get away with, I'm just like, how did, how did, how did they do this? How, how did it happen? So that's the other thing. What one person might be able to do, you won't be able to do. And you just never know until you put it out there. Um, also, don't jump into being a full-time creator too quickly. I think that that is something, everybody's so excited to be able to do that. And I really respect people now um, in the aftermath who do content creation, they put out one or two, three or four videos a month, um, but they kept that full-time job. And I like that because this is such a fickle industry 
and one day you're able to pull in a whole bunch of views, maybe two years you're doing it, three years, four years, but at a certain point in time, people's interests might move on and there's new apps that come around and new creators and new, you still have to eat, you still have to pay your bills. So I don't know, I think um, ever since people could do content creation full time, it's been a kind of a flex to be able to say, well, I'm a full time content creator. Like that is a flex. And some people do it for a really long time. But I do think things like age and what kind of content you do and um, who your audience is. I think that all factors into whether or not you will be able to be one of those that can do it like forever or for at least like up to 10 years. Or you'll be somebody that has a two, three year stretch and is like, all right, I'm out. Or, or even shorter than that, even shorter than that. Some people only make it six months. Some people only make it a month. Like it's a very, very fickle thing. And also as a content creator, you're also only one or two videos away from your career not even existing anymore. And that's scary. There's very little job security. So um, I think for me, one thing that I would uh, have done differently is not jump into full time so quickly. Like, And that's something that I can say in retrospect, because at the time I was like, Whoa! get out of jail free card I'm getting out of the classroom and if I'd had anything else literally lined up that I could do full-time that wasn't being a teacher especially in the time of uh, American history that we were in you know we're still uh, still a lot of COVID protocols um, it's still it's still not great you know being in the classroom um, if there was anything else that I could have done I absolutely probably probably would have done it but um, yeah don't don't jump into doing this stuff full time so fast. I think that that's definitely something I would have because, you know, it's just it's I, I don't think it's something that I I, I don't know. I, I would have not done that. Also, also, here's something else I would change. Get as much education as you can. I go back and look at my old videos and I cannot believe that. I mean, you can get education on all the parts of this process. So um, there are videos I have where I'm talking and my wig is back here. Why? Why is it so far back? What happened? Why? And it's simply, I didn't know anything about wigs. Social media is not the place to just start talking with your wig way back here. It's just not. Please don't. Because you know what people will do? They'll screenshot everything you do, send it around to their friends, post it on uh, message boards and forums and things. And um, you think, I'm just putting myself out there. Who cares? Meanwhile, you're becoming a meme. And uh, it's 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 horrifying. Um, the The, the, the fallout from little tiny mistakes you might make online so make sure you educate yourself as much as you can like you know the hair is one thing but i also i didn't even know where to plug my microphone in for the first six months of youtube i was literally yelling and trying to figure out where's my audio well it's because i had it plugged into the headphone jack because i was using a different style of camera i was moving so fast to become a full-time creator i didn't even learn where the mic needs to be plugged in didn't even learn and I went and I went through so many mics. I did um, like the little road mic. I did uh, a mic that like was kind of in front of my face and I could have just saved myself all of that. I would get the same audio. Well, not the road like lav mic, but um, I would go through mics and I'd get the same audio and I thought my camera was broken. And something told me one day, are you sure you got it plugged in the right place? And this was seven months into YouTube, seven months. And I used to get comments about audio all the time, but I think when you're getting so many comments from people about so many different things, it's, um, you know, and I knew I was like, I'm doing the best I can with my audio. Like it is what it is. It was not, it was not the best I could do. I literally didn't even have it plugged in. So things like that, like education, like learning, just learning how to present yourself and your content the best you can. Because one thing I do know is that, you know, virality is one thing, people responding and you've made them angry and they, but quality, quality is a whole nother thing. And once virality runs out, people will be looking for quality. Audiences are looking for quality. And here's the thing, it's nice to have a moment of virality because it, it boosts you up and you know, you, people see you and your videos get a lot of views and you can make a decent little income for a little while. But eventually the viral, uh, the viral thing can bust or you can never quite meet that goal again. That's not just me. That happens to a lot of creators. It's very rare to become a creator who pulls in like 100,000, 400,000, 300,000, a million views every time. They exist and I've seen them, but I'm not one. And a lot of creators aren't that. Um, but it's still possible to get decent views or to get new viewers on your channel just by producing quality content. 
and you know what quality content at least looks like, people will come in and watch something just because it's pretty. You'll know how to make it look pretty. You'll know how to make it look appealing and feel appealing if you take time to educate yourself. So definitely education is something that I would do different. And then of course, I've mentioned this a lot of times, um, chill a little bit on the terrifying stories if you have them. I, again, that's one of those things where some people can get away with it and some can't, but um, I'm, I'm definitely in the camp of can't get away with it. <laughs> However, uh, I think just for your own well-being, it feels really good at first to let it all out. But then you go back in and you realize how much you've exposed yourself to people who don't know you. And even people in your real life who do know you, who now think that they have the right to talk to you crazy because they're like, oh, well, you said this on your, hey, 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 watch out, watch out, you know. Um, but you did that. You put yourself, you put that out there. So um, that's something I would have done differently. But I'm going to wrap this up by going back to my original sentiment, which was, I really would have done nothing differently because I didn't know. When I was uh, coming out and being on camera and doing my thing, I was being 100% who I was at that time. And I thought I was ready, okay? You couldn't tell me, no, I was like, I'm ready. I didn't watch these kids do it. I didn't watch, you know, the, the TikToks and I didn't watch this YouTube thing and, I, and I'm ready to go. And I would know none of these things without trial and error. And it's the trial and error that allowed me to grow. And it's the growth that was part of the bigger plan all along. So I wouldn't have done anything differently because I couldn't have done it differently because I didn't know. And I'm happy almost for how rocky my, my journey has been because it's growth that I feel will benefit me in the long run and will benefit other people that have witnessed it and watched. Because honestly, if you've been here since the beginning, you have seen a spike, a spike, a fall, a spike a blowout, a resurgence, not quite a coast. Like that's how I would describe my journey. So I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's something that's interesting to watch and definitely interesting to comment on. And it's been interesting to go through and I wouldn't change anything cause it's mine, you know? Um, but if I did change things, it would be the things I just listed. Definitely take more time before jumping into doing this full time. Um, get an education so I know what I'm doing and I know how to produce the best content I can. Chill with terrifying stories. I have a lot of trauma related to specific areas in my life, but strangers online don't need to know. Even if it feels good to let it out, the consequences of that can be corrosive uh, on your in your professional and your personal life. And then um, realizing that yes, it is wonderful to be 100% yourself, but the internet is such a subjective and cruel place that you're being 100% yourself and you get bullied, somebody else is being 100% themselves and they get a movie deal or a syndicated podcast or whatever, you know, you just never know. So uh, I would say measure that authenticity with a sense of self-awareness and protection. Um, and so that's, those are things that I would do differently if I could, but I can't, so, uh, you know, it is what it is. All right, so I rambled on about that for about 16 minutes, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down now. <laughs> This was the end of today's vlog, my first of Lazy Girl Vlogmas. I hope I'm able to upload this within the hour of finishing this part. And um, I will see you guys back. My next episode is going to be on Wednesday. We're going to do a little bit of holiday maintenance. I'm going to do some last minute Christmas shopping. I'm going to do some uh, other little things, uh, things suggested to me by my patrons. So I'm excited to try those. And uh, yeah. We will see how this thing goes. I'm trying to make it all the way to Christmas, posting every other day. So that means I post four times, four of these little vlogs, and we will see how it goes. But it is the end, and I hope to see you next time. As always, thank you for watching.